I'm the best, so do not test the top of my profession. The master of my chosen field, of that there is no question. Serious, serious profession. Serious, serious profession. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. Savannah. Loves me. Savannah, what are you doing with that artichoke? It is a costly vegetable. Not unlike her, really. <laughs> What's up with little Bo Peep? Oh, she's been like that all day. And the day before. And the day before that. The day before that, too. Wednesday, Tuesday, on Monday. Everton, please stop before we reach the Jurassic Age. <laughs> Bring it real. Smile on her face. Whistling a merry tune as she goes. I'd say the lady was happy. How strange. Perhaps she's been kidnapped by aliens and replaced by an exact replica. Hey, there's no law against happiness. But there is when you're around. Well, I, I don't know whether I'll tolerate random outbreaks of jollity in the workplace. I mean, whatever next? Group hugs? Community singing? Huge circles of inebriated sous chefs doing the hokey cokey and shaking it all about? I mean, why don't we just go mad? Why don't we all just get naked and writhe around in an enormous vat full of baby oil? <laughs> I shall nip this in the bud right now. Renee. Yes, Chef? This floor is putrid. As a threat to basic hygiene, it is almost on a par with the contents of Gustav's trousers. Yes, Chef. Get it mopped, girl. Yes, Chef. It will be a pleasure, Chef. Keep young and beautiful. It's your duty to be beautiful. Keep young and beautiful. If you want to be me. <laughs> Sign for this langoustine, please, Mr. Ballesteros. <laughs> Gareth, have you noticed anything unusual about my Rainy? Well, she's happy, enthusiastic, getting on with other members of staff. I think somebody's spiking her lip gloss. <laughs> no, it's worse than that. I think she's in love again. I recognise the symptoms. Mm, well, let's hope it lasts. Eh? I mean, she's working very hard, and let's face it, she's cheaper to run than a pit pony. <laughs> Gareth. Have you got any idea what kind of good for nothing layabouts my daughter tends to attract? Actually, I do. She did go out with Everton, remember? Ooh, that, that was a diamond compared with the riffraff she usually hangs about with. I tell you, Garth, I've seen off more tennis coaches than John McEnroe in his A day. <laughs> oh, if she's serious about one of these wasters, it means trouble. Cyril, can I give you some advice? Mm. Don't interfere. Renee is old enough to know her own mind. What little of it there is to know. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right. Oh, by the way. I uh, received a letter addressed to you this morning. I accidentally opened it. You did what? I accidentally read it as well. <laughs> From your father. He's coming to see you. All right, Chef. Uh, you reading a letter, Chef? <laughs> no, Everton, using only the powers of my mental concentration. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can make this piece of paper spontaneously combust. <laughs> you be careful, Chef, because that could be dangerous. <laughs> it's a letter from my father. He's coming to visit. Oh, is he? How is he? As gittish as ever. In fact, if there's a Hall of Fame for gits, my father would be revered as the gold-plated, gilt-edged git god of all time. <laughs> I loathe him more than Gary Rhodes' haircut. <laughs> You're not still vexed with him, are you, Chef? Vex! <laughs> Everton, when I was ten years old, my father went round the corner to buy a newspaper. He never came back. <laughs> so, so what'd you do? We borrowed the TV page off the woman next door. <laughs> that man only ever appears when he's broke. <laughs> Talk about bad pennies always turning up. I wonder where that comes from. Where what comes from? That saying, bad pennies always turning up. I mean, what exactly is a bad penny, eh? Oh, one that doesn't do his homework? Uh, <laughs> One that rides a motorbike and smokes cigarettes? <laughs> One that picks fights with smaller change? I mean, what is that? <laughs> Everton, when your mother was pregnant with you, was she ever exposed to dangerously high levels of radiation by any chance? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, Chef, she was a dinner lady. <laughs> that could do it. It's a shame, though. It's a shame you're going to have to tell your dad about you and Janice splitting up. Nah, not at all. We'll just have one of those intimate father-son moments where I break down and confess all and... He takes me in his broad, fatherly arms and says comforting things like, <laughs> <laughs> You finally cocked things up this time, ain't it? 
I tell you, that girl was too highty tighty for you. <laughs> but you wouldn't listen well. She highty tighty all the way out the front door now. <laughs> <laughs> What do I have to do to get a guy to send me flowers like that? That's easy, Savannah. Pretend to be dead. <laughs> flowers from another man. Why don't she just rip my heart out and tear it to shreds, huh? Perhaps she hasn't got a vase big enough, Everton. <laughs> Pretty flowers, Renee. What are they? Expensive. They're from Rick. He's my new boyfriend. He's got three cars, two houses, and a really big yacht. <laughs> they must say personality counts for nothing. <laughs> Renee, I wonder if I could reintroduce you to these carrots. Carrots, you remember Renee? Renee, carrots. Thank you, Chef. I really thought I was over it, Chef. Let me guess. Mumps? <laughs> the Ebola virus? Congenital insanity? No, no. It's Renee. She's driving me mad. I mean, she just came over and told me how, how, how good looking and how rich her new boyfriend is. But, Chef, you take away all the good looks, right? You take away the money, the fancy cars, the yachts, everything. And what are you left with, Chef? You? Yes! <laughs> me! Well, I really have to hand it to you, kid. You certainly keep those guys chugging down that old conveyor belt. Well, Mummy says it's my winning personality, but I do think a young, firm body does have its advantages. <laughs> oh, Renee, the guys I'm interested in are never interested in me. Sometimes I think the world is just one gigantic gay ball. Maybe it's your approach. Treat them mean and keep them keen. Like how? Well, um, make them jealous. Flirt with their best friend. That always does it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, except the guy in question doesn't actually have a best friend. Oh. Come to think of it, he doesn't have any friends. Oh, so you fancy Mr. Blackstock, then? <laughs> oh, we would be so great together. Mm. I could bear him strong children. Abraham, Martin, and Chip. <laughs> but he hardly seems to know I'm alive. Oh, come on, Savannah. I'm sure you're exaggerating. Bye, Renee. See you later. You rang? Ah, oh, morning, Garth. I thought I'd let you know that I've decided to take your advice and keep well out of Rini's affairs. Very commendable. Have I had a private detective instead? <laughs> You've done what? Mm, brilliant, isn't it? And the beauty of it is he's a pro. He's already come up with results. And? Well, the good news is that this Rick's not after her money. He's as rich as I am. And the bad news? He's as old as I am. He's 45. 45? <laughs> well... I look mature for my years, due to the prominent Bryson forehead. <laughs> He's old enough to be her father. I quiver at the thought of his wrinkled hands caressing her tender, supple young flesh. Cyril, I find that remark offensively ages, particularly coming from an old git like you. <laughs> We've seen an awful lot of each other. It doesn't look good. Try not to think of it as losing a daughter so much as gaining a bowls partner. I fear she's making a terrible mistake. Cyril, you have three failed marriages behind you. I fear your bottom is not adequately designed for sitting in judgment. <laughs> Besides, what difference does age make? A lot. Rini and this Rick are clearly incomputable. Well, Janice and I were the same age. It didn't help us. But you are not my daughter. I know. And not a day goes past when I don't regret that. <laughs> well, I shall speak to Rini and tell her she's not to see him anymore. And that's that. Excuse me, mate. Could I get a bag of chips and a nice piece of adder to take away? <laughs> Hello, Dad. Hello, Garrett. I brought you a nice present. Oh, thank you. Hennessy XO. What you do, Dad? Knock over an off-license? That was paid for with hard-earned money. And your city suit? Handmade in Savile Row. Savile Row? Savile Row, Wolverhampton. <laughs> Say, you've never been out with an older woman? Of course I have. My auntie used to take me to the zoo all the time when I was younger. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean romantically snogging and that. Oh, no, never. Why have you? Oh, yeah. In fact, when I was a struggling young chef, I used to rely on the favours of lonely older women to make ends meet. Really? Yeah. 
In fact, I, I can't look at a crane brew later this day without seeing a Zimmer frame and a bass part. <laughs> look, look, Gus, you're a man of the world, yeah? You've seen things, right? Now, tell me, how do I get Renee back? Be like me. Forget about women altogether. Come on. <laughs> I haven't been with a woman for 14 years, and look at me. <laughs> you know what I say? About heavyweight boxing champions, if they have sex before a fight, it saps their strength. In a couple of months, I reckon I can take on Mike Tyson. <laughs> you don't seem to understand. Look, when I see Renee, I just want to... Everton, when you got a jar of pickled onions in one hand and the remote control of the Playboy channel in the other, what the hell do you want a woman for? Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Women, birds, chicks. I mean, who needs them, eh? Yeah. Very smart, Dad. Where's all the money come from? I had a little put away and I invested it mm. in livestock. Your father made a killing. So, how you been? Fine. And Janice? She's fine too. <laughs> She's crazy about me. Great. Let's go and see her. You can't. Why not? She's not here. Where she is? On a world cruise. Around the world. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> Janice is so crazy about me that I decided to buy her a holiday as a thank you present. You met a fine woman like that go on a cruise alone? Boy, are you mad? <laughs> all those jolly jack tars will be all over her like a rash. Janice would never look at another man. Why not? She's a lesbian. <laughs> no, she is not. Janice and I are extremely happy together. Oh, praises be. Hello, Mr. Blackstock. Hello, Liverpool. Dad, it's Everton. I know that. I suppose you've heard the news, then, eh? I said to him, look, women, we're better off without them. What news? How about Mrs. Blackstock leaving? Her dinner. Janice left her dinner. <laughs> After we spent so long preparing it, too. But so I thought saying. she was on a world cruise. A cruise? Typically. First she walks out on him, and then she goes on holiday. Janice. <laughs> Janice walk out on you after you pay for a damn world cruise. <laughs> there was no cruise. Oh, so she just walk out on you. Everton. Oh, uh, Chef, I, I just remembered I've got something moderately important I've got to do. I hope it involves a chair, a piece of rope and your neck. <laughs> there was no world cruise. Janice just left me. Well, come on, then. Out with it. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Come on. I thought you made a terrific couple. I am really sorry. Garrett, I realize I haven't been much of a father to you. <laughs> That's an understatement. I was the only kid around our way to get taunted by orphans. I know I wasn't around when you were young. But I'm here now, and maybe I can help you through this difficult time like a real father. This is a joke, right? You've got Jeremy Beadle hidden in the toilets. <laughs> All right, give me a break. I know how much you must miss Janice. Beautiful smile. The silky texture of her hair. And that voice. I bet when she whisper in your ears, it's like being touched by an angel. And everywhere you look, Memories, like the colors of your mind. <laughs> Misty water-colored memories of the way you were. For God's sake, shut up! Hi, don't shout at me, Garrett. I'm only trying to be of help. You help? That's a love. Garrett, I don't come here to argue. I come here for a reason. I find myself a lady friend near Minnie. We've been together for some time now, and I am thinking seriously of maybe settling down with her. The poor thing, what's she ever done to you? I want you to meet her, Garrett. I want you to give us your blessing. What for? I'm a chef, not the Pope. You're my son. It would mean a lot to me. I want to do things right from now on. All right, you can come around for supper on Thursday, but if you so much as mention the fact that I used to wet the bed, you'll be wearing your first course. <laughs> Tell her already. <laughs> Excuse me, Chef. Yes, Savannah? I need tomorrow night off. 
Oh, uh, okay, you can swap shifts with Gustav. I, I wouldn't normally ask, but, um, it's this guy I've been seeing. He's asked me out to dinner. Oh, have a nice time. Oh, I will. He is so crazy about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, takes all sorts. <laughs> oh, and handsome? This guy makes Gustav look like Mel Gibson. I think you've got that the wrong way around, Savannah. I have? Yes, well, there's no way Gustav looks like Mel Gibson. Not unless there was a miracle combined with extensive cosmetic surgery and total darkness. <laughs> no, I think you meant to say he makes Mel Gibson look like Gustav. That's right. That's how handsome he is. My guy. Well, glad we cleared that up. <laughs> Me too. So, uh, I can go then. On my date. With a man. <laughs> Bye. Daddy, how could you? Rainy pet. It's Rene, and I am not your pet. If I was, I'd scratch your nasty, beady little eyes out. This isn't going to matter all night of my life. You're damn right there is. You had me fall. No, no. Well, just a little bit. Uh, how did you find out? That moron tailed us in a company car. Mm. It had Dixon's detective agency written on the side. <laughs> so, what do you have to say for yourself? Oh, I, I got that brochure for that car that you were interested in. I am waiting, Daddy. Well, I, I was worried about you, and with good cause. I mean, what do you want to get involved with a man twice your age for? Rick is kind, generous, and he treats me with respect. Mm -hmm. In fact, he reminded me a lot of you. But I was wrong. You're not alike at all. Rick would never have hurt me like you have. That's the last time I get a private detective out of a newsagent's window. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hello, Garrett. Where's Minnie? Oh, she popped into the ladies to powder our nose. Oh. She wants to make a good first impression. Oh, sweet. Hey, so what you cook for dinner? I could eat a horse. Well, I wish you'd said I've done a roast duck now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a drink? Oh, I could murder a guineas. Oh, good call. Two cold guineas coming up. That must be her. Could you get it, please, Dad? I want you to meet Millica Min. Oh, this is a bit of all right, isn't it? Bloody hell! Dad, kitchen, now! What the hell are you playing at? She's young enough to be your daughter. I know. Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> no, it isn't fantastic. You're supposed to be behaving like a real father. Yes, but I never say a damn priest. Minnie is a wonderful girl. We have a lot in common. Yes, like your age is divisible by hers exactly three times. <laughs> You're only jealous because I have a woman and you don't. How dare you? Just because I don't relish the idea of having a stepmother who wears lycra, that's nothing to do with Janice and I. You're always a pompous ass. Don't speak to me like that. You started it. Well, now I'm going to finish it. You can get out of here and you can take Luby Lou out there with you. <laughs> Go on. So what about my roast dog? <laughs> you can take that with you. Go, <laughs> Go on. And he took me to this fabulous little restaurant in Woodstock. We had a candlelit dinner with champagne. Oh, it was so romantic. Just me and him. And his god dog. <laughs> It was magical. Oh, did I tell you about the violinist? Just the seven times, Savannah. <laughs> I'm sorry, am I like really going on about it? Not at all. And don't like the fact that there are now yak farmers in central Peru who can recite the details of your date off by heart, leading to believe otherwise. <laughs> we don't do dates, do we, Everton? No. I'd rather be at home, stripped down to me jockeys, eating pickled onion crisps, watching one man handling his dog. 
It's one man and his dog, Everton. Hello. Is there a Savannah Kunkel works here? Unfortunately. Uh, <clears throat> over here. <gasps> For me? <gasps> read the card, read the card. My darling Savannah. Oh, that's me. Thank you for the most wonderful night of my life. You have ruined me for all other women. Forever. Signed. Some poor sort of don't get out much. <laughs> So maybe if you're a rich man, you could afford a frame for those. All right, chef. Look, um, how about me, you, and Dad going out for a drink? Everton, my father no longer exists. All evidence of his life on Earth has been completely eradicated. What you mean, like the X Files? <laughs> he introduced me to his lady friend today. Tight skirt, long hair, not a day over twenty-eight. God, I really lost it with him. Mm. I don't blame you, you know. I mean, she could have brought someone for you, innit? Yeah, I'd like a word. In private. Oh, God, didn't you know? I've got some good news. Don't tell me. Using the most powerful microscopes known to man, scientists have discovered a new solitary hair growing on your head. <laughs> no, it's me and Rini. We're talking again. Oh, good for you. Yeah, and if I stood my ground, you'd come around. It's the nature of the beast. You have to show them who's master. You bought her a new car, didn't you? Oh, yeah. That's an MX-5 convertible. Cost me a bloody packet. And she won't be seeing this Rick again? Well, not exactly. You see, apparently this Rick is a very decent young... Well, he's a very decent sort of bloke. <laughs> Reminder of me, you know. <laughs> and you're allowing your daughter to fraternise with this pervert? He's not a pervert. He's in advertising. He's old enough to be a father. What about his wrinkled hands caressing her tender, young, supple flesh? Well, you say the age didn't matter. I did not. You did she too. There's been a phone call. That should spice up your autobiography. No, it's the hospital in Oxford. Bad news. Janice. It's your father. He's been taken in with chest pain. Oh, my God. You. What have you done to my father? What do you mean? Don't play the innocent with me, young lady. I know your type. First, it's soul-searching across a crowded room. Then it's holding hands in the park. The next thing you know, it's page 78 of the Karma Sutra and boom! <laughs> Hello, heart attack, and bring on the Merry Widow. You can't say that about me. You don't even know me. Or did he drag him off to a rave? I can just see it now. A 56-year-old man dancing in the middle of a field in the middle of the night. <laughs> and the next thing you know, he's taking ecstasy and tried to French kiss a cow! Yeah. No wonder his heart gave out. Gareth, there's nothing wrong with your father's heart. He was suffering from severe indigestion. <laughs> Whose fault is that? His. I told him not to eat a whole duck at that time of night, but would he listen? My father never listens to anybody. Tell me about it. He's as stubborn as a mule! Yeah, you can say that again. An argumentative... The worst? That's why I'm out here. We've just had a few words. What about? Money. As usual, he's broke again! I thought he just made a killing on livestock. The livestock in question won the 2.30 at Sandown Park last Monday. Of course, it's all gone now. Typical. What do you see in him? He's a nice bloke. He thinks the world of you, you know. Oh, yes. There's a very special place in his heart just for me, somewhere between tax inspector and hemorrhoids. No, you're wrong. He's always saying Gareth this and Gareth that. My son, the famous chef. He's very proud of you. He is? Look, Minnie, I think I owe you an apology. Forget it. It's not the first time I've been on the wrong end of the Blackstock temper. <laughs> well, as I'm here, might as well go and see him. I'll get a coffee. What the hell are you doing here? The hospital called me. Well, they shouldn't have. Bad enough I'm dying without having to look at your stupid face. Dad, <laughs> you're not dying. You had indigestion. Even if I was dying, you wouldn't care. I'm here, aren't I? Only because you want to do the catering at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dad, if you and Minnie still want my blessing, then you've got it. She's all right. Oh, so now you want to do the catering at my wedding and all? <laughs> <laughs> if you like. 
Look, <laughs> take care of yourself, all right? OK. See you. Bye. Oh, Garrett, you think you have it in your heart to lend me a few quids? My cash flow dry. <laughs> One monk, Oh, and of course he's asked me to meet his parents this weekend. I am so excited. Why, Savannah? I never met a parent before. Of course I have, you big silly. It's just, well, you know, it's a big step. Mm. Oh, by the way, there was a call for you earlier from the florist. Apparently, your credit card didn't cover the cost of the flowers you sent yourself. So could you send a cheque to cover the balance as soon as possible? Oh, right. I don't suppose they said anything about a basket of fruit for tomorrow, did they? Not as far as I know. Good. <laughs> ah, Cyril, you're looking very dapper tonight. <laughs> What's the occasion? Annual general meeting of the Skipton Pickled Egg Cartel? No. Oh, I've been dinner with Reenie and Rick. Oh. Uh, group it! Hello, Daddy. Chef. Renee. You all right, love? Uh, where's Rick? I don't know, and I don't care. I never want to see him again as long as I live. Bon appétit. <laughs> uh, is there something the matter, pet? You should have heard him, Daddy. What have you done to your hair, Rene? You've got far too much makeup on, Rene. Oh, you're not going out in public with me dressed like that, Rene. The decrepit old sod sounded just like you, Daddy. <laughs> Quite frankly, I don't know why you ever let me go out with him in the first place. <laughs> well, I expect it'll soon blow over less order, eh? Oh, no, sorry, Daddy, I've got a lift waiting. <laughs> Come along, Everton, I haven't got all night. <laughs> so, have you two decided yet? The guinea fowl, stuffed with truffles, served with forest grass in a sauternes juice, will do for me. Oh, no, it won't. Don't worry. We're not paying for it, you know. You've already been in hospital once this week. What are you after? A season ticket. All right, you two, relax. We're supposed to be having fun. How can I relax when she watch me every move? You heard of Big Brother? Well, meet his little sister. Do you have any idea about the level of your cholesterol? What's my car got to do with anything? <laughs> All right, you two, calm down. We're supposed to be having a nice supper. Shut Stop. up! He's always the same. Never listen. Chuck. Fry ups for breakfast, junk foods for lunch. I'm a adult. I swear, not. his arches will end up more block than the M25. Stop. When you go, they'll scatter your ashes and chicken. Well, I've had enough. I'm out of your age. I'm not your ashes. If you don't think about me, I'm the best, so do not test the top of my profession. The master of my chosen field, of that there is no question. Take the time to listen to what I have to say. So what I have to the say. Game that we have to play. Game. It's a serious, a serious profession. Serious, serious, serious profession. Serious.